Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. And thank you, Times Higher Ed, to provide us with the opportunity to share our perspectives about student employability. I have the honor to moderate today's conversation between Anand Agarwal from edX and Paul Asgir Torfason from the University of Iceland. Welcome, everyone. So please let me share some context here um, with you, what we've been hearing from universities in Europe over the last nine months. I cluster them in a few themes. I'm sure it's not surprising to you that uh, universities have been struggling with inconsistency, um, fragmented approaches to getting back to school. And meanwhile, maintaining the continuity, keeping students engaged and learning while, while juggling with all these new ways of learning in response to COVID-19. And then the quality, we all want to offer good learning opportunities, but moving online is hard and very resource intensive in particular, if it's in an emergency state that most of you have um, had to be doing. But I think what has not uh, brought so much to the attention um, has been the employability. Traditionally speaking, universities have the responsibility to build the skills for graduates for job security. But they also play an important role um, for lifelong learning initiatives where learners of all ages have opportunities to continue to learn. Due to COVID, um, furloughs and layoffs, but also emerging opportunities require new skills development in an accelerated way. So how do we bring this all together? So that's a little bit of context for this discussion. Anand, edX has a, a foot in many worlds, a pioneer of online learning with roots in academia and serving universities, businesses and governments. What was the immediate impact that edX experienced as a result of COVID? Thank you. Uh Thank you, Caroline. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, you know, we are, as edX, we're a nonprofit providing great learning experiences to learners all over the world, and we are a purely online platform. Now, as we do this, COVID hits in March, and all over the world, the whole world goes from learning in person to learning fully online. And uh, when that happens, the entire world comes to edX or other learning platforms in order to learn. Uh, previous slide, please. And when, and when we see that happening, the number of people that came to edX was unprecedented. In the month of April, for example, we saw 10 times the number of people coming to edX during per day, for example. And if you look at the month of April, we had 5 million new people come to edX from all over the world, which was equal to the number from all of 2019. So it was exponential interest in online learning. But before I go into more detail, uh, let me give you a quick overview of why people were coming to edX and who are we. edX is an online learning platform and we are a partnership of some of the top universities in the world like Harvard, MIT. You will hear from PAL from the University of Iceland, um, University of Cambridge, and uh, many top companies like Amazon Web Services, IBM and others. We have an online learning platform and learners from all over the world are coming to edX to learn. We have over 34 million students learning on edX, whether they are in colleges or whether they're working from all over the world. We also partner with universities and corporations that are signing up their employees or students onto edX. And we have over 1500 such companies and universities working on edX. When people learn on edX, they not only learn, but they also get credentials, which they can post on their resumes or on their LinkedIn profiles or otherwise let their employers know. We have credentials like micro masters, micro bachelors, professional certificates. These are all new ways of learning with smaller credentials, where rather than spending two years in college, you can earn a credential called a professional certificate in two or three months. And during COVID-19, people are coming to edX and looking to learn quickly, learn new skills uh, so that they can use that for employability and other reasons. During this time, we heard from universities, as Caroline mentioned, that they had a real challenge moving all of the students online. They were used to teaching students in person, but now they had to move completely online. So uh, we launched edX online campus. edX, this is an approach where as a university, you can sign up your students to take edX courses. And during COVID, uh, in the past several months, we made it available for free to institutions all over the world. 
and we had uh, over 450 institutions and over 100,000 students learning on edX as a result of that. We were hearing from Europeans who were ages between 15 and 24, 40% uh, of them had lost their jobs they were coming to learn. We also surveyed learners on edX and 56% 50 per of the population was telling us that they wanted to learn online so that when the pandemic was over, they could come out stronger with new skills that would help them seek better jobs and, and be prepared for the upcoming economy. And uh, of course, learning online uses the internet. And in Europe, this is particularly well served by the internet where over 70% of Europe's population has access to the internet. Thank you, Anand. And now I'd like to invite um, uh, Paul um, to address the following question. So, so we've, been, we've been engaging actively um, over the last few months and um, I'd love to hear from you uh, what the primary issues were that the University of Iceland needed to address in response to the pandemic. Um, so in general, uh, when the University of Iceland closed, I think it was on the 15th of May, we obviously faced a lot of challenges, uh, like most other schools around the world. We only had a few days notice to shift the typical classroom uh, to online format. Uh, but we always wanted to keep the high standard and the standard of examination, but lesser the bad consequences if the students did poorly. But luckily, we were quite well equipped with online tools which teachers could use in their teaching. We were implementing a new learning management system. We were part of edX. We had new examination tools so we could take exams uh, from home. And we had everything covered in the basic tools. But teaching is, of course, not only about tools and gadgets. Uh, the bigger challenge was, of course, for the teachers. They had to navigate and adapt in this difficult situation. And it was great to see how everyone did the best they could uh, to carry on the teaching online. And I know this was a huge challenge they faced and difficult many, for many, but we managed. And of course, we, uh, like me uh, at the Academic Affairs Division, we did our best in providing teachers with new information on the situation, provide assistance to them, provide uh, the best practices on teaching online and helping in any way we could. And we also used the edX initiative and gave students and teachers access codes uh, so they could particip participate in edX courses. And we saw that a lot of students and teachers actually did. Uh, so they used the time well during the crisis. Well, I also would love to hear your perspective um, on what, uh, what is next? What, are, what is the University of Iceland going to do looking forward? Uh, that's a huge question and we're still in the COVID survival mode, uh, so it's hard to say exactly what we'll do moving forward, uh, but um, we had a summer school this summer where we used edX courses uh, and included them in our, edX, in our courses, so um, we had a freedom and space to try different things because of COVID, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which is not always the case. Uh, so we see possibilities of using courses on edX uh, uh, as something we want to in integrate with our current uh, courses. Um, and uh, with these possibilities, we have a clue on where we want to head going forward, which is a luxury in a way. Um, so also, we have already induced, introduced, uh, introduced um, this to the campus, so we've seen the benefits and what we need to improve. So this is obviously something we would like to continue doing, and it's just a matter of when. Okay. And there's also a wide range of subjects we would also like to introduce using edX. Excellent. Well, thank you, Paul. And back to you, Anand. Can you tell us a little bit about what you think it is that higher education should be preparing for to meet the needs of the future? You know, as we talk to universities all over the world who are either working with us or enrolling the students in our courses, we are consistently hearing one theme, that they are having incredible difficulty moving all of their content online. And that is the reason why they came to us and said, hey, edX, why don't you help us? You have uh, thousands of courses on edX from some of the top institutions in the world, uh, University of Iceland among them. Uh, why don't you make available the content 
to us so that our students can use it. And so uh, we launched edX online campus uh, to help universities all over the world. And this is sort of a next big step forward in increasing access to education all over the world. With edX online campus, any college, uh, whether a community college or university, you can leverage edX online courses using our platform. It's the same learning experience for learners and the larger community. Uh, there are courses from 155 of the top institutions in the world, and uh, the platform features and integration options available uh, you know, are particularly suited for faculty at your institutions or students at your institution. We integrate with your campus LMSs, if you have an LMS like uh, uh, Moodle or Canvas or other, or if you don't have an LMS, you can integrate directly into edX so that your students can single sign on onto edX and get access to a huge catalog of courses. As universities have begun to use the edX catalog, we see three major modes in which universities and faculty are using edX courses for their students. I'll start from the bottom. One is independent learning, where as an example, uh, University of Valencia in uh, Valencia in Spain are using it. There, they open up the catalog to their students and their students and faculty and staff members can actually take these courses completely independently. And this is helping in the professional development of uh, not just the faculty and staff, but also alumni. In addition, their students can be taking, uh, taking these courses. Uh, the second approach is called faculty facilitated learning. And uh, this is the kind of approach that Pal and his team at the University of Iceland are using the courses. Here, the courses are taken by the students at the university, but faculty members or instructors on the campus are working and helping the students. So at University of Iceland, for example, they created a sequence of courses on, uh, from edX and faculty helped the students take these mm -hmm. courses. So that is the second model. The third model is called blended learning, where here the campus faculty are blending elements of their own teaching with teaching and learning on edX. And here, one example of this is the IT University in Lahore, where the faculty are augmenting their own instruction. Uh, in this case, they adopted the data science micromasters from University of California, San Diego on edX, and they've incorporated that into the master's degrees on their campus. Now, these are three modes that I think will become uh, very popular in terms of how campus faculty are using the online courses. So how is, so as learners and, and students and faculty use the courses, how does this help students? How does it help them in their learning? How does this help them in their employability? So first of all, this increases access. Um, as a university, uh, you all, we all have gone fully online, but we have very little resources available online. It's expensive to go online. And so, and also it's hard to create quality courses. So by making available uh, courses on edX through our online campus platform, you increase access and quality for your students. It's modular. Um, you don't have to take a whole degree on edX. We have modular programs like micro bachelors or micro masters, which are about 20% or 25% of a master's degree. A micro bachelors might be about uh, three to six to nine credits. So these are modular, so you can take pieces. These are stackable in that students can take multiple of them, <clears throat> multiple, uh, multiple of them and stack them towards four degrees. And uh, these are in uh, in-demand subjects like uh, machine learning, uh, Python programming, IoT, uh, green energy, uh, solar engineering, and sustainability from Delft, for example. So uh, um, uh, agriculture and other sciences from bargaining. it. So there are many, many, many programs that are available in a wide range of in-demand topics. And all of these are available on edX's credit grade platform. And when uh, these MOOCs transfer to credit uh, via you know, things like uh, ECTS in Europe and so on, uh, the platform also supports uh, credit grade techniques like virtual proctoring and so on to make sure that it is a student's own work and that is being counted towards the grade. So as students are given more resources, better learning, more credit opportunities, 
and they also form international communities. At the end of the day, it's all about helping students succeed and learn, but also to impact their employability. So as students are learning on edX, here's some data that we've seen. For students who've completed certificates and professional certificate programs or micromasters programs, within three months of completion, 89% of the students who earned the certificate are telling us that they had a positive career outcome as a result of that credential, where a positive career outcome might be a new job, a promotion, or a pay raise. So this is really helping with the employability and uh, MicroMasters programs and professional certificate programs are endorsed by some of the leading employers in the world, like uh, Cisco and IBM and Walmart um, and others so that you know when you take these programs, they will directly help you with the skills that you need for employability. In fact, as we are all impacted by COVID-19 and uh, as we saw earlier in Europe, 40% of the youth between 19 and 25 have been furloughed or have lost jobs. And so during that time, uh, there's a huge opportunity, whether you're at university or whether you're furloughed, to earn skills so that when the pandemic lifts and companies begin hiring again, you have exactly the right skills that you need in order to get uh, jobs in uh, the growing economy once the pandemic lifts. Thank you, Anal. Um, as Paul mentioned earlier, it's, um, this, is, this is all a great overview, great solutions, but I'd like to hear a little bit more about what the University of Iceland has done to keep the students engaged and active during the summer. Yeah, so everyone were quite worried about the summer. Uh, it's in the Icelandic culture for students to get a summer job, uh, gain experience and some money for the upcoming semester and some even traveled, uh, and tourism is a huge thing in Iceland and provides a lot of jobs. But due to COVID, there were limited jobs available to students and they couldn't travel as much. So to keep students occupied uh, and give them some experiences during the summer, the Ministry of Education, Science and Culture handed out funding for institutions to hire uh, students for summer jobs. Also, they provided schools in Iceland funding to host summer courses, uh, which the University of Iceland did. And like everything these days, we only had a short time to prepare these summer courses. And I think we had around three weeks or something. Uh, and on, one of the focus we wanted to uh, focus on is that we want to create the best uh, possible courses uh, with the limited time frame we had. And one of the things we wanted to do is use edX more at the University of Iceland. Uh, we have been part of the edX for many years, uh, or not many, I think four to five years. Uh, and we have created a few online courses, for example, about volcanoes and magma movements, Icelandic sagas, and my favorite one about sheep in the land of fire and ice. I always have to mention that. <laughs> um, so, uh, that was uh, that gave us an idea and quickly after the announcement from the ministry uh, we wanted to use edX as part of a summer course program um, and we contacted you guys and luckily enough you were willing to step up and help us with this crazy plan and narrow time frame um, and we wanted to use the high quality edX courses available to us, but we also wanted the learning to take place at the University of Iceland, not on the edX web page. So after careful thought, we introduced a new course format with edX courses included. So the format would be like this, the summer course at the University of Iceland might include three to six edX courses. And then we included a final project from the University of Iceland. Uh, example of this is a course here, I can see it here, called Global Hollywood, Science Fiction, Franchise and Superheroes. And in this summer course, students would take five courses from edX, and then they would complete the summer course with a final project that this teacher from the University of Iceland would review. And I see that in this specific course, they had uh, an edX course called Hollywood History, Industry and Art. They had three Star Trek courses, which you can find on edX. And then you find a course called The Rise of Superheroes and then Impact on Pop Culture. So students would uh, finish all these courses on edX and then they would have to hand in their final project. 
and we had around 40 courses during this summer which use this format and it seemed like both students and teachers were quite happy with the results. So you helped us connect the uh, student management system and our old learning management system to edX. Um, uh, we're changing a new learn. Uh, we're going to uh, a new learning management system. That's why. Um, so the edX cat catalog would fluently move from our system to edX, um, and we could see the progress of students being sent back to our system. So the teachers would be able to assess and grade. And there was easy flow between systems, and it worked out even that even though we had a really tight time frame. Excellent. Well, thank you for sharing that, Paul. Um, so, um, and, and we've been very excited working together and, um, and it's excellent to see how, how you've managed to, um, to engage your faculty with online content um, from multiple um, different faculty members. So, um, final question. Um, real quick, Paul. What advice do you give your, um, I mean, we have attendees here um, from all over the world in, in similar positions like yourselves. What do you, what is your final, final advice? Real quick, because I need to ask Anand too. Uh, no pressure. Uh, <laughs> I think we're becoming like expert in providing materials to students. Uh, and I think we've been doing it quite well and mostly in the COVID panic mode. Uh, but I think we need to stop a bit and breathe and think about the things we're doing well and that the things we need to improve. And I think we need to like focus a bit on engagement and cooperation and think about outside the box, how we can uh, combat the digital isolation and so on. So I, I think we really need to think about these things <laughs> as More the short answer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And Anand, how about you? Final thoughts? What would be your piece of advice? You know, as Pal said, it's actually very simple. Uh, the whole world has gone to learning online, faculty and students. And before COVID-19, there was pushback. But now during COVID-19, everybody's doing it. So as a faculty member and a university leader, here's your chance to innovate. Here's your chance to try new things. And one new thing that you can try is actually going to be the future of learning, which is blended. Uh, you may not have a lot of online courses. So think about using online courses. And as the leaders at University of Iceland have done, blend them with campus courses from your own faculty, share courses and cooperate with other institutions around the world, share courses and create blended learning models by cooperating with other universities and also by creating your own content. And at the end of the day, the big beneficiaries will be your students and your university as by taking advantage of these learning opportunities, blended opportunities, they will come out of COVID much stronger as individuals and also the university will come out much stronger to be prepared for future events that may happen around this world. Thank you very much, um, Paul and Anand for this very insightful conversation. And we look forward to hearing any questions from the attendees. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much and thank you everybody for your questions. Um, one of the first we saw come in was, uh, is online campus just for students? And uh, thank you so much for that clarifying question. Um, the online campus solution obviously was designed for a higher ed institution with higher ed institutions in mind, but of course, edX has uh, courses and programs as you heard in over 35 subject areas and at all levels in in-demand topics. So of course we have something uh, absolutely for everybody. Um, but we wanted to uh, highlight online campus today because again, with the, the furloughs that are happening in Europe um, and also the need and the desire really for everybody, the need for lifelong learning and the uh, changes in profession um, that people are constantly having to learn. Uh, so edX has uh, opportunities for all stages of academic careers as well as professional careers. So as you heard, for example, uh, in the case of the University of Iceland, of course they provided learning for their students, but they also had opportunities for their students to connect with businesses uh, with regard to taking place of those internships. So students were able to learn and connect on a more professional level. 
And then also they were providing additional professional development opportunities for their staff as well. Uh, I think another example that we can point to in Europe is uh, UP Valencia, where their staff uh, and faculty took the opportunity to either expand their knowledge in their area of expertise, or perhaps they uh, took the opportunity to learn something new and an adjacent skill set. So uh, to wrap that question, of course, online campus is really thinking about students and faculty and the student learning experience and success, but ultimately edX has learning for everybody. Uh, and Caroline, I see there's a question about uh, credit and credentialing. I'll pass it over to you. Thank you so much and hi everybody again. Um, yes, um, great question. Thank you for, um, for, for asking that question. So in general, generally speaking, edX is, doesn't give credit for its courses. However, I would say that 80%, in particular in Europe, um, of our um, institutions who put content on our platform are giving uh, credit um, for those courses to their own on-campus students. And so, um, or our courses are um, have an academic rigor. Uh, we have micro master's programs. Um, we have micro bachelor's programs. Those um, those are all either credit bearing or even for credit. And in Europe, we have a virtual credit exchange initiative um, where European institutions with and uh, comparable with the same shared ECTS system. Um, give credit for MOOCs. And so, um, so it's really, really um, up picking up. I was speaking an, a few days ago with another institution here in Europe, and they are actually planning to give credit for their courses, not only for their own on-campus students, but as well for students who are in a different part in the world and who are interested in taking those courses. And they would get then credit for those courses. Our platform has an academic rigor. You can do virtually proctored examinations. And so um, we've been working hard to facilitate that. And we see it more and more and more happening. No. So I, think, um, I think those were the majority of um, th those were, I mean, we summarized some of the questions that we that we uh, saw coming in. Susan, anything else that you've seen that I missed? We're happy to take more questions, but I think we have addressed the major questions. And of course, we hope that, uh, that uh, between the Q&A session and uh, the earlier presentation that uh, you have a good idea of what's happening um, with edX Online Campus, but we'd also invite you to come by our virtual booth as well and have a chat.